Okay, buzz. I mean, come on, people. Stop asking me about Trump. I've said everything I've got to say about Trump, and it bores the hell out of me, and I think it bores the hell out of at least half the audience. All right, but here goes the super chat question. Trump is reducing regulation, helping corporates lowering taxes, trying to get fair trade, zero tariffs offsite. So why are you against him? Okay, start with the last one. I don't believe he's trying to, to get f fair trade. Oh my God, there is no such thing as fair trade. Ah, fair trade is a Bernie Sanders term. It's a term that says that not only are tariffs equal between countries, but then all the environmental regulations and all the labor regulations and all the conditions under which people earn, all of that must be equal. That's fair trade. That's fair trade. And that's, by the way, what, what Trump wants. He wants to make it very difficult for China to export to the United States because he wants their wages to go up, environmental regulations to be there, and if they're not going to do that, then we're not going to trade with China. No, that is economic ignoramuses. That is about social planning. I get angry because I've said this so many frigging times. And this is so, this is, this is basic economics. This is, you know, I'm not going to repeat it. I've done whole shows on this. I'll, I'll just give you the highlights. The only rational trade policy from an economic and moral perspective is to lower tariffs to zero now, immediately, unilaterally. It would be great if every country did it. But the only responsibility the American government has is for our, the tariffs placed on American citizens. By increasing tariffs, you're increasing taxes. It is never, ever, ever right to increase taxes. It is never moral to increase taxes. It is never strategic to increase taxes. Never, ever, ever increase taxes. I mean, that's, I don't know, coercion 101. Objectivism, one, economics 101. You don't increase taxes. So tariffs are taxes. The only, I'll repeat this one more time. And, and I, you know, you, we can do an econ class. But just open any econ book. This is something that economists actually agree on. Left, right, middle, libertarian, objectivist, everybody agrees on this. Except like two economists who happen to work at the White House. And a bunch of cronies who will do whatever Trump says. But this is complete economic ignorance. Now, I also, so the only rational, moral, an economically sound trade policy is zero tariffs on all goods except goods that are stolen. They should be banned. There shouldn't be a tariff on them. They should be banned. So if China's stealing intellectual property rights, ban those products. Don't put tariffs on it. Don't tax me because China's doing something wrong. Don't allow me to buy stolen goods. That's what governments do. That's what police do, right? Second, there's zero evidence except, and I said this in the beginning of the show, zero evidence except three statements by Trump that he believes in zero tariffs. Now, Trump says everything. He said a million different things about trade. Why do you believe those three statements and not the other hundred statements where he believes in protectionism? All the evidence suggests, all the evidence suggests, except for those three statements, which I think are random. I think, what's his name? Uh, his economic advisor whispered in his ear, uh, the guy from CNBC, the economist, uh, Larry Kudlow whispered it in his ear. So for a moment he said it, but he doesn't believe it. Nothing he does suggests he believes it. The deal with, with Mexico is not a free trade deal. It actually increases the costs. It is not, it hasn't caused Mexico to lower tariffs. It's one of the most crony deals in history. It's taking NAFTA, which was cronyism, better than the alternative, but still cronyism, and it's still cronyism. It favors some industries at the expense of other industries. It sets all sorts, all sorts of rules on what stuff can cross the border, what can't, what tariffs go up, what tariffs go down. It's changed the chairs on the deck of the Titanic. It hasn't saved the Titanic. It hasn't brought about free trade. So no, he doesn't believe in zero tariffs on all sides. When, when, and when the European commissioner offered zero trades on auto, Trump said no. And you know what he said also? 
Europeans don't buy enough American cars to make it work. Because his primitive, ignorant view of economics is that the way trade should work, fair trade, is that the Europeans buy exactly the same number of cars from Americans as Americans buy from Europeans. Now that is so dumb. That is so stupid. But that's what he said in this, in this interview, basically what he implied in this interview. There is zero reason to believe he understands trade and he wants zero tariffs on all sides. So please never ask me that again because that's just, it's just a misrepresentation of what Trump is saying. And he purposefully confuses. He knows what he's doing. He says a little bit to appease everybody, to create confusion, because he's a great marketer. And he knows that when people are confused, his charisma can get it through. He's a demagogue. And it's exactly what demagogues do. He lowered corporate taxes. I'm all for lowering corporate taxes. Indeed, indeed, most Democrats are for lowering corporate taxes. There was unanimity in the country around lowering corporate taxes even before Trump. There was talk under Obama about lowering corporate taxes, but he couldn't cut a deal with Republicans because he wanted to also, I don't know, increase other taxes. And Republicans didn't want to work with Obama. But if you cut taxes, so uh, corporate taxes, great, good, win, wonderful, right? But on the personal taxes, nothing was done. A little bit lowering. The only tax that really matters from an economics perspective is the top marginal income tax rate, also from a mall perspective. The rich should pay less taxes. Um, that was reduced by a fraction. And it doesn't matter because spending, government spending, government spending is higher than it was under Obama. So you've lowered taxes, but you're spending more. Where does the difference come from? You're borrowing more. The Treasury has done some of the largest auctions ever since the stimulus package, Obama's stimulus package, which I assume you're all against because it was Obama, not because I think you understand why stimulus doesn't work. Sorry if I'm insulting my audience. I know. I, 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 I get carried away. I don't mean all of you don't know that it's why a stimulus doesn't work, but some of you don't. Some of you objected to everything Obama did because it was Obama, and some of you uh, approve of everything Donald Trump does because it's Trump. So we're spending a lot of money, and we're borrowing like crazy. So we lower taxes. It makes no or very little <coughs> excuse me, economic difference or moral difference. Because if you borrow, it means you're going to have to tax in the future to pay the debt back. So while you lower taxes today, you're increasing taxes in the future. Now, how is that right? How is giving a break to people today and taxing future generations, right. But it's also wrong because spending today sucks money out of the private economy through the issuance of bonds, which is not invested into productive activity. So cutting taxes is good, but not that good. I never claim, never argued that cutting taxes is important because it's not. What's important is cutting spending. And Republicans won't cut spending. And until they cut spending, they will hear, they will get hell from me. Right? I will attack them till kingdom come. Because the only thing that matters is cutting spending. Not, now Trump is reducing regulations. That's true. And I've praised him many times for reducing regulations. I think he's doing it by accident. I don't think he cares one way or the other. There's no, he hasn't pushed Congress to pass legislation that reduces regulations, which would have long-term impact and long-term effect because it's very difficult to overturn legislation. He's hired some good people to the regulatory agencies, and they are, through administrative powers, reducing regulations. Those administrative powers could be used like that to reverse everything that they're doing. But why isn't Donald Trump out there? Instead of Instead of everything that he is doing, why isn't he tweeting that the Republican Congress should pass massive deregulation? That would make a difference. That would make a huge difference. And would be sustaining 
And it would change the entire business environment, not just for his administration, but for years and decades potentially to come. That's what Jimmy Carter did. I know, but if you go back and look at Jimmy Carter, he massively deregulated through legislation. And so did Ronald Reagan. So the regulatory agencies are deregulating. I'm all for that. I think that's wonderful. I think that's good. But why aren't we doing what is necessary? You've got a Republican House, a Republican Senate, and a nominally Republican president. Why isn't it happening? What are the excuses? Where's the leadership? Donald Trump is this master leader. He's this great leader. Why isn't he rallying the country? around cutting spending and cutting regulations. And, let me add, at the Treasury Department, who is in charge of financial regulation, I don't see the deregulation. I see Fatty and Fanny, Fatty, uh, Freddie and Fanny, bigger than they've ever been. And a Treasury Department that is supporting their continued existence, 10 years after the financial crisis, the idea, I, 10 years ago, if you had told me that Freddie and Fannie would still exist, I would have said, you're nuts. 10 years ago, if you had said Freddie and Fannie would still exist in spite of having a Republican House, a Republican Senate, and a Republican president, I would have said, you're completely insane. But there they are. And, and the Treasury Department wants to continue their existence. They have supported bills in Congress to continue their existence. Dodd-Frank is supposed to be reformed, supposed to be done away with. All this too big to fail stuff. Nothing. Nothing. Leadership. So the real big regulations, Obamacare, right? yeah, he's chipping away at their fringes. Chip no, it's good. I'm all for chipping away at the edges, whatever, whatever it takes. But to praise him for it? To make a big deal out of it is ridiculous. If they'd done away with Obamacare, wow. If they'd done away with Dodd-Frank or big chunks of Dodd-Frank, wow. If they passed one law that significantly deregulated an industry, wow. But they haven't. They've chipped away at the regulatory agencies at little details. And yet, again, I'm all for that. Let's not delude ourselves. So many of you are deluding yourselves that that makes such a big difference. It short run, but not in the long run. Not in the long run, not in the medium run. It just ain't going to happen. So that's why, <laughs> that's why I'm against. And now, that's not why I'm against him, right? That's some of the details of why am I against him. I'm against him for a thousand other reasons. I'm against him because he's making the presidency of the United States. He's demeaning the very nature of the presidency of the United States. I'm against him because he's institutionalizing an authoritarian mentality in people, people accepting a, an authoritarian view of the world because of him. And, and he, he is in his nature an authoritarian. He's not acting like an authoritarian because he can't but he is, his nature is authoritarian. I, I, I dislike him as president because he's vulgar and he's nasty and he's stupid and he's, he's backstabbing his own people. He has no loyalty. Um, you know, it's, 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 he undermines the rule of law. He undermines the very nature of our government. He despises the division of power and the separation of powers that our beautiful constitution allowed for. Uh, I can't think of, 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 uh, of, uh, of all the different ways in which I think he's a bad president. Yeah, he deregulates some. Good for him. Good for us. Good for us. And, and lower corporate taxes is good. It's good. It's good. There's nothing bad about that. Um, <laughs> but the idea that that redeems everything else or that those are good of such magnitude that we should be celebrating, I think is delusional. All right, uh, I didn't want to do that, but somebody paid for me to do that. So, you know, when you pay me, I do it. <laughs>